Hi guys, so today's declutter is kind of wrapping up my cream and liquid eyeshadows. We've looked at all of my cream potted and stick eyeshadows. We've looked at all my individual powder shadows. Today we are looking at all of my individual liquid shadows and anything that would be considered a liquid glitter, kind of like these steel ones. So a lot of different formulas in here, a lot of different colors. All right, before we get into the declutter, I want to show you something that I have yet to test. So these are the Sydney Grace, uh, what do they call these? I think these are just their cream shadows. So this is their new packaging. I actually have one of their old packaging and I loved it so much that I was like, oh, I need to try more of this. So this is their old packaging and this is their new. I much prefer their new packaging. It's a lot easier to dispense because it's got this little tiny uh, pump at the top. But I did want to show you these because I did pick up five in her most recent sale. Um, I have not put these on my eyes yet, so I'm not in a position to declutter them or give you any thoughts on them other than to say I loved the formula of the one I had. So this first shade is called Lap of Luxury. The second shade is My Bond, then Warm Weather, Manny Petty, and Wish, which is a really vibrant purple. So I need to play around with these a little bit. It does seem like there's some differences in formulas from something that is very metallic like these to something that has a little bit of a duochrome micro shimmer in it. So I do intend to play with all of these. If you guys would like a review of Sydney Grace, I have quite a few of her um, eyeshadows at this point. I'd be happy to give you like a swatch video of all the shadows I own. I think I probably have 50 at this point. And then I'm definitely gonna be trying these out. So if you guys are at all interested in a Sydney Grace video, let me know. I'd be happy to film that but I'm not counting these as part of the declutter because these are still uh, in my test bin. All right so I have two matte shadows here. I don't use liquid matte shadows a ton. This is part of the e.l.f. Beautifully Bare line. This is in the shade Blushing Rose and it is really pretty. Um, it, it's a good all over lid color and just buff it out and call it a day. It's got enough depth to it. I feel like that's really what you need when you are uh, doing a single shadow. It is pretty, but I'm just not reaching for it. So I do think I'm gonna pass this one along. And then secondly, this is obviously a sample size of the Makeup Forever Aqua XL. This is the shade M56, which was actually a really pretty taupe shade. Um, this one I actually really did like, which is why I kept it. I used it quite a bit for a while. Um, it's a darker matte, as you can see, but it buffs out into a really pretty color and it's really easy to work with. I don't feel like I have very much left in this and I'm just not reaching for it a ton. Um, I feel like I've gotten a lot of good use out of it, but ultimately I think I've decided that for as much as I liked this, it's probably not something that is worth purchasing for me in a full size because it's not something I'm gonna reach for all the time. All right, next up we have sort of bronzes and a little bit of copper action going in here. There's a couple of different finishes, so let me swatch and talk about each one. All right, so up first, this is the Hard Candy Glitterati. This is definitely a thinner glitter formula from them. This is the shade Star. I would say this is not quite as um, glittery as the Stila Glittering Glows, but it definitely gives a really intense, beautiful shine. This is a color that's got a really interesting, almost like trichome shift to it. So it shifts sort of green gold to rose gold to bronze. It's a really unique shade. I looked at some of the other shades that they had in this because I did really enjoy this formula and I just felt like the other shades were things that I already had in my collection. So this was the only one I picked up, but it's really pretty. This is from Models Own. This is their liquid metal shadow. This is in the shade Copper. It is a really deep, dark, sort of antique bronze color. I would not consider this copper in any stretch of the imagination. It is really foiled and really pigmented. Um, my biggest challenge with this is I think it's just too dark of a shade. It's not the kind of shade I look for in a liquid shadow. I tend to look for liquid shadows that are a little more brightening than deepening. The formula was nice on this. I just feel like some of the colors they picked for this model zone liquid shadow were just, I don't know, they weren't the best. They were all really dark and deep. So I feel like they have a nice formula here. They just need to probably invest more in a color range that I think more people would like. This is Sydney Grace Liquid Shadow. This is the color Vibrant Madness. This is an absolutely stunning shade. The new packaging is definitely a lot better, but this is one of the most beautiful. So this, I just feel like, is the most beautiful liquid shadow of life. Like, it's absolutely stunning. It is a gorgeous, sort of neutrally bronzy copper shade. 
it's it's insane like this is beautiful in fact if i was going to tell you to start with any single sydney grace liquid shadow it would be this and i do feel like it is actually unique to my collection of this is another little cover girl bombshell um shimmer shadow i feel like they have discontinued these and i feel like they were just ahead of their time with them i feel like if they launched them now in different packaging people would eat this up. This is stunning. Like it really is stunning. Now, because of this sort of squeezy tube packaging, you do kind of have to, I usually squirt some out on the back of my hand and pick it up with a brush, but you can use your finger once you kind of squirt some out um, on the back of your hand. I love this formula. It's also very, very, very old in my collection. So I do think I'm gonna pass it on, but I really do hope that CoverGirl refreshes this because I think they had something really nice here and they just kind of walked away from it because really the beauty community hadn't kind of gotten on board with cream and liquid shadows at that point. So, and then last, this is a little Revlon eye art. So if these are interesting, so you have a cream metallic shadow on one end and then sort of a glitter liner on the other. I actually love these glitter liners for kind of applying glitter all over my lid. So if you were looking for a cheaper way of getting really intense glitter, kind of like the Urban Decay glitter liners, or even like some of the colors that you see from uh, Stila, this is a great way to pack on glitter and then have it lock into place. It's really intense, really foiled, beautiful glitter color. I love this copper color. I love this coppery gold glitter here. And then this copper shade down here actually works really well. I, I like the formula on both ends. It really does work well over the top too. So if you lay this down as a base and then tap some of this on over the top, it's stunning. I think I'm gonna get rid of this model's own one. I, I just know myself, like I said, I think it's too dark and too deep, but I do wanna keep these three. All right, up next, we are looking at all my gold ones here. So uh, this is my only Stila Shimmer and Glow. I always go, always go to get more of them and then I always think like, man, I've already got so many liquid shadows. These are not cheap. I got the one that I really, really wanted in Diamond Dust, which is like a silver and gold glitter together because I felt like I could put this over the top of just about any look and it would match. It also has kind of a holographic, a true holographic rainbow shift to it where you're getting a ton of different colors in here. This is just one of those ones that looks beautiful over absolutely any eye look. And then this is my Pixie one. We talked about this in my roundup for spring for, from Pixie. This is Sun Ray. I do think these are overpriced as is a lot of Pixie makeup, but this one is more of a yellowy gold with a strong silver glitter in it. The Stila one is definitely more of a silvery undertone. And this one is definitely more of a yellowy undertone, but it has silver glitter in it as well. These are two that I would consider to be glitter toppers. I probably wouldn't wear either one of these on their own, but they look beautiful over different eye bases. This is from Profusion. This is their metallic liquid eyeshadow. This is in the shade Gilded. This was part of a set that I picked up at Holiday, and I thought it was just a really interesting gold but I was a little disappointed at how thin it was. I really had to build this up quite a bit to make it work. And then this is from Wet n Wild. This is part of their new liquid shadows. This is the shade Goldie Lux. And this one is thinner as well. I would probably think that this one would be one that would be best layered over something, but it's not as sheer and transparent as that one. Hopefully you can see that. I gotta be honest, I don't wear this color gold a ton. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass these two along and keep the more glittery shades um, versus one that's maybe a little more pigmented. And then this Profusion one just wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan of. All right, so these are my more rose gold shades here. So one of the Essence Metal Shock, this is in the shade One Second to Mars. I love this formula. I think you guys, if you've been following my drugstore roundup series at all, you know I love this one. This is a very orange, almost peachy tone to it as far as less rose gold, more peach, I guess is what I would say. This is from the Wet n Wild collection. This is the shade Shells and Whistles. This is unlike the last one, which had more glitter in it. This is purely metallic and it is a beautiful formula. I would say that is more of a traditional rose gold shade there. This is from Profusion. This is the shade Dazzling. Also was part of one of their holiday sets. And this one wasn't as sheer as the last one. It's slightly more coppery. And finally is the one Stila Shimmer and Glow that I have. Maybe I should have put this in my taupe section now that I look at it. Yeah, we're gonna hold on that. 
that doesn't even match these real gold. So I definitely feel like I have three distinct tones here, but I also don't feel like I'm gonna need all of these. So I do think I'm gonna keep these first two. I really do like those undertones and I'm probably gonna pass on this one, which is more of a brassy coppery color. It's just not as good of a shade on me as these two are. So we'll do that. All right, so these are more of my light champagne, champagne pink shades. Um, this first one here is from L'Oreal. It is one of their infallible paints. It comes with two different colors on either end. You've got this very white champagne color here and then you've got a deeper, more classic champagne down at this end. Um, I did enjoy the formula on this. I thought it was really pretty. It's good for inner corner highlights and all of that jazz, but I feel like I may want to prioritize some of these other ones over that. This is a little touch and soul. This is actually a Korean brand that Ulta picked up and everyone kind of went crazy over it last year. This is the shade Talia. So essentially what you have is a cream shadow on one end and this is a really beautiful classic champagne. And this is a great standalone shade too, by the way. And then on the other end, you actually have a loose pigment. So you have almost more of a spatula on this end, and you can press this over top of it to add a ton of shine and dimension. You could also use this just over a glitter glue and just have a really intense foiled look there. Next up, this is from Wet n Wild. This was part of their Goth O Glam line. This is in the shade Pure Intention. This one is a champagne that has a gold micro shimmer running through it. And then finally, this is from Cover FX. This is one of their shimmer veils in the shade Celestial. It's a really pretty soft pink champagne. And this one is really pretty. We're gonna talk about one that I didn't care for as much from a formula perspective here in a minute from this line, but this one was actually not disappointing in the least. I really did enjoy it. This is this is a shade that I definitely will wear for inner corner, for all over the lid. I do really enjoy this tone for that perspective. So I do think I'm gonna keep three of these. So I think I'm gonna pass this L'Oreal one on and I'm gonna keep these remaining three. So this is probably my biggest category. I have lots of shades of taupe in here. And then I also tossed the silver because I just didn't know where to put it. So let's swatch these and kind of whittle them down a little bit. This is from Maybelline. This is their color tattoo eye chrome. This is the shade silver spark. I think this is a nice shade, but to be totally honest, I'm gonna probably reach for the silver in my um, cream shadow formula over one of these. So I think right away, I'm just gonna pass this guy on. This is another one of those Revlon Eye Arts. This is the shade Topaz Twinkle. So you've got this sort of cooler toned bronze shade as a cream shadow. It's stunning. This is a beautiful all over lid shade, just single shade, buff it out. And then you've got a really pretty bronze glitter in here that you can either use as a liner or use an over top of shadows, or you could tap it over the top of it and kind of add a little bit of glitter that locks down into place. This is from Wet n Wild. This is the shade Cashmere Love in their liquid catsuit cream liners, or liquid liners rather. This is stunning. This is a taupe that has a ton of silver glitter in it. Really beautiful shade. This is a much different formula than this. Shells and Whistles is a pure metallic and this has a lot of micro shimmer running through it. This is another Maybelline color tattoo. This is in the shade Beige Luster. Nice and pigmented. This is a Catrice Liquid Metal Shadow in the shade Brown Under. And that is a cooler toned taupe there, and I do really like this formula as well. This is from Jessie's Girl. This they call their Fluid Shadow. This is the shade Destiny. Um, I don't care for the applicator on this. It is a brush tip applicator, and I just don't feel like it works as well. The color is really pretty. The pigmentation is nice. Um, I would, will say that as I buff this out, it tends to sheer out a little bit, but it's not unmanageable. My biggest problem with this is that it makes my eyes burn. Every time I've tried it, my eyes have burned. So I am clearly going to pass this guy on. And then this is the Stila shadow in the shade that I cannot pronounce. This one is more of a sort of lavendery taupe. 
really pretty, really intense, super easy to blend out, really opaque, lasts on the eye, stunning formula. I mean, absolutely stunning formula. Oh, I missed one. This is the NYX Lid Lingerie in ah, Night Glow. So this is one of their liquid shadows that are shimmery as well. That one is a little deeper. It's a pretty formula. Um, it's not as metallic as the Stila ones. It's definitely more of, I mean, it's gonna give you some shimmer, but it's more of a satin texture at the end of the day versus super metallic. Um, this is my favorite shade family of all the liquid shadows I have. These are the ones that I reach for the absolute most. So I feel like I am not gonna do as well in this little section here. In fact, I think I, so I definitely wanna keep my Revlon one. I love the fact that I've got this glitter on one end and then this beautiful copper color down at this end. Uh, I do think I can get rid of this Maybelline one here because it's almost exactly the same shade as that Revlon one, so I don't need that. This liquid cat suit is completely unique to my collection. I love it. I like this more cool toned one here. I like this more lavender toned one here. And then I like this deeper sort of warm taupe shade from NYX. So I'm keeping the rest of them. So next up, we're looking at sort of teals and greens. And then I threw this orange one in because it just didn't really make sense anywhere else. So let's talk about these. This is from Sinful Colors. This came out in the spring. They released sort of a micro collection. And I think they were in and out on it of a couple of different beauty products. I picked this up because I was interested in liquid shadows at that point. So you've got a teal at one end and a pink at the other uh, with this doe foot wand. These are definitely not shades I would wear together personally. Maybe I'm just not color adventurous enough. I found these at my local CVS. Pigmentation on the pink shade was actually really pretty. The one on the teal was kind of patchy. I had a hard time even blending it out for it not to kind of wipe away if you can see that there. So I never had the best of luck with the teal shade. This is another Metal Shock shadow from Essence. This is the shade Supernova. It's kind of a, I don't know, it's like a dirty green gray color with some silver micro shimmer running through it. I actually really liked how this looked on my eyes the few times that I played with it. So um, I doubt this is one I'm gonna get rid of. I just think it's fun and kind of unique. Got a couple of olives here. This is a color tattoo. This is in the shade Khaki Cool. We have another Revlon Photo Ready Eye Art. This is in the shade Desert Dazzle. So this comes with a probably more true green olive, maybe more of a deep moss color. And then this one I tend to like to keep because it has a pure gold glitter on the other end and I like pairing this, I'll pair it with this green, but it'll definitely go as a beautiful gold shimmer glitter over top of other shades. And this I think is actually a pretty close dupe to the Urban Decay glitter liner that everyone loves. And then this is another L'Oreal Invaluable Paints. This has a matte orange on one end and a light shimmery peach color on the other. Pretty intense pigmentation on this. And I thought this might be a shade where I'm like, oh, I could put that all over my lid and then tap a little bit this over the top and have a really pretty orange eye. It actually worked really well. Um, I'm not gonna knock it. I just think that if I'm gonna apply color like this, I tend to not wanna reach for these sort of liquidy things. So I think at the end of the day, I'm gonna pass this one on. I already have a light pinky color. Um, and I, the teal just didn't work on that one. I'm gonna keep this Metal Shock from Essence because I really like that color. I feel like one green is plenty for me, so I'm gonna keep the Revlon one so I have my glitter liner still, and I do think I prefer this green shade just a smidge more. I'm gonna pass on these two here because I just don't think I'm going to wear them a ton. All right, so next up we have sort of purpley shades and more mauves and berries, so kind of kept those cooler toned colors together. First up is a liquid cat suit from the Gotho Glam line that Wet n Wild put out. This is the shade Goth Tears. I did find this on a, one website and I linked it. I will try and link it down below if it's still available. This shade is frippin' stunning and I really wish it wasn't um, limited edition. If you like those sort of pinky purple shifting shades like I do, this is absolutely stunning and is beautiful. Like just beautiful. I hate that this was limited edition. This is another one of the Jessie's Girl Fluid Shadows. This is in the shade Twilight. The color is a really pretty frosty, um, like light lavender color. But as with the other one, made my eyes burn like absolute fire. So 
just gonna get rid of this one. This is another one of the Metal Shock Shadows from Essence. This is the shade Total Eclipse. Really kind of interesting blue-brown shifting color. Um, it's deeper, but it's really pretty plummy. I don't know, it's got a really nice shimmer shift through it. I don't know, this is a really cool color. I really enjoy this one. Next up is a Cover FX Shimmering Veil. This is in the shade Amethyst. I had bought the pink one at Ulta and then we had gotten this one in a BoxyCharm about the same time I bought the other one. And to be honest, this one was a lot more patchy and didn't last as long as the lighter one. So I don't know, I know purpley shades can be hard to formulate sometimes, but whereas I loved the lighter, more pinky champagne color from them, this one just didn't work very well for me. Um, one that I do like that's sort of a pinky rose color is this Lid Lingerie from NYX. This is the shade Whimsy. It's a really pretty pinky tone. It's like sort of a muted mid-toned pink. And it's actually really pretty. I have worn this buffed all over the lid and then just added a little bit of a shade to deepen it. And I really liked how it turned out. Really nice formula on these. I don't feel like anyone talks about them and I think they're really nice. Um, it is more of a satin and maybe that's why people don't talk about them. They don't have that high shine finish the way that some other ones do, but I think it's really pretty. This is a supernova shadow in the shade Moonlit. It's a deeper cranberry color. I had tried one of these in years past and didn't care for it um, because I felt like the formula was just off. And then I saw Kathleen Lights talk about how that formula was a little hit and miss for her, but this was her favorite shade. So when I had a ColourPop order that I was placing one day, I just added this to the cart and I'm really glad I did because it's a beautiful shade. It's a berry shade that has a really pretty pink and silver uh, shift to it because of some micro shimmer in there. I'm gonna try and do this on my hand. Sometimes I feel like I can get the light to reflect better when it's on my hand versus on my arm. So hopefully you can see that reflect there. It's really pretty. And I had no issues with this one. So I had had a different shade or maybe even two and I remember decluttering them at one point because I just didn't enjoy them. Um, this one is gorgeous. So the risk with these is I do think the formula is a little hit and miss, but if you like this sort of cranberry shade, Moonlit is gorgeous. And then last is another Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit. This is in the shade when stars align. And when I looked at this online, I thought the color was absolutely stunning. I just don't feel like this shows up very well. I think it's a very thin base. It is, well now it's gonna swatch pretty, but it's got like a black base to it with a all the sparkle and all the color is coming from a um, cranberry sort of glitter color in here. And as a result, because the base is black, I feel like it just doesn't go well on the eyes and it tends to look a little bit patchy. I don't know how well you're picking up on that. So I just don't care for the deeper shades in this line from Wet n Wild. So I think based on what is left, I think I want to get rid of this Cover FX one. I'm also going to get rid of this Wet n Wild one, but I think I want to keep the remaining four here. All right, so here's what I'm keeping. Here's what I'm getting rid of. I It looks like there's a lot more in here than here, and don't get me wrong, I have kept more than I have decluttered, but we're actually getting rid of 18 and we're keeping 21. So that is 46% of my collection decluttered. I feel like I've got a nice mix of glitter as well as metallic and more satiny shades in here and I don't feel like there's anything in here that I'm totally going to miss. I also thought I would give you a quick update on all of my single shadows. So when I think about single shadows, it's my powder shadows, my cream shadows, as well as my liquid shadows. So this is liquid shadows obviously today, got rid of 46%, but in total I got rid of 48% of all of my single shadows. So I'm feeling pretty good about a more edited collection of things that I really love. I also wanted to show you how my drawers look now. So here's the first drawer where it has sort of my potted cream shadows as well as my single powder shadows and the few loose pigments that I've chosen to keep. There's lots of empty space in here, very easy to see things now. So I'm feeling really good with the sort of more curated collection. Down a drawer, there's a few other things in here besides just my cream pencils and my liquid shadows. So, um, but focusing here on the center, the middle section here, I haven't kept a ton of cream stick products. So what I've chosen to do is put my true glitter toppers in here. And then I've put my more metallic shadows that I would use as a wash all over my eyes by themselves in the back here. I still feel like I have quite a few of these, but I definitely think it's a heck of a lot easier to 
see these than it was before. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's declutter. Look for more declutter videos coming from me soon. Comment down below on your favorite liquid shadow. I would love to know. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.